All right, folks, so this is a BTEC DMR6X2 digital handheld ham radio. In this video, we're going to show how you program it from the keypad to work with local repeaters. The first thing you're going to need is some configuration information for your local repeaters. In this case, I'm using the DMR Mark website. To do a search that drills down in my location, or any location for that matter, and show you repeaters that are DMR capable in their configuration information. So once you find one, you can click on it. You can find out its frequencies, color code, time slot, talk group assignments. It's important to note this information and write it down because you're going to need it when you program your radio. I'll include a link to this website below. I'll also include a link to Repeater Book. You can do similar searches and find similar configuration information about repeaters in your area or areas that you may be traveling to. Sometimes it's important to cross-reference your information because things change, configurations change on these local DMR repeaters and you want to make sure that you're staying current. We're going to need to make sure that we have a talk group that's assigned to the repeater programmed on our radio. So we want to go into our contacts, hit back, and then pick new contact. When you get to the private ID screen, you want to hit the hash key, which takes you to a group ID entry box. Put the talk group number in there, and then input the name. In this case, we're going to put TAC310 and 310 as the group ID. You don't need to fill out any of the other information. You can if you'd like to, but it's not necessary. Once we've confirmed the name of the contact or talk group, we're going to scroll down and make sure to save the contact record. Once this is done, we want to go in and select the contact. We hit list, get a list of our contacts, scroll down to select, and now that contact is selected. Now we need to configure our channel settings. We hit menu, and then we scroll down to settings, and from there we pick chan set. Okay, from the Chan Set menu, the first thing we're going to do is make sure the channel type is set to digital. It's pretty simple. Just go in, pick the second option, and hit Select. We can also set our power settings. You can put on whatever you like. Here, I'm just showing how to set it to high, but you set it to what's appropriate for you. We're going to scroll down, and then we're going to put in our RX frequency that we got. Oops, let's check and make sure that we're on narrow bandwidth first. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put in our RX frequency. Remember, we got this from the website. So just go ahead and key that in like you would when you set up any frequency on any radio. When we're done, hit confirm and then do the exact same procedure for your TX frequency. This is where and how you account for your offset. We're not going to put the channel name in yet. We'll do that when we save the channel. We're going to go down and take a look at TX Allow, and these are conditions where you can actually set controls on when you can TX your radio. I'm just going to set it for when I'm on the same color code. Sometimes I use promiscuous mode, and I want to make sure that I'm transmitting on the same color code. You can also set this to uh, always, so that way it's not an issue. Check your radio ID and make sure it's the one that you entered in for your DMR ID. Go down to color code and pick the color code that's identified in the repeater guide that we looked at. In our case, it was 1. We want to do the same thing for time slot. Again, in our case, it was time slot 1. Some radios require the use of an RX group list. This isn't required on the BTEC. It's basically a collection of talk groups that you're allowed to receive when you're listening on a repeater. Back to the Chan Set menu. We're going to pick new channel. We're going to give this a number that's not in use. In this case, 10 isn't in use, so we're going to go ahead and use that. It immediately takes us to a name field. And you can use the keypad to go ahead and type in the name of the repeater that you're going to contact. Make it something that you can remember. You use the hash key to switch between capital letters, lowercase letters, and numbers. As you can see, I fumbled with this a little bit, but I got it saved. Once that's done, I assign it to a zone. I only have zone number one programmed in this radio because it's a factory default configuration. When your radio is set to channel mode, you'll see the frequencies for each one of the channels you programmed. 
That can be handy, but I don't really remember the frequencies of every repeater that I use. So I go into menu, and this time I go to settings, and I go to radio set. Once I do that, I'm going to go down to option number four, which is channel name, and set that to option one for channel. Once I do this, I'll actually be able to see the channel name in the VFO slot, and it makes it a little bit easier to know which repeater I'm talking to. Anyhow, that's really it, folks. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and post them below. If you like this video, go ahead and click thumbs up or subscribe to see more content of a similar nature. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate it.